Hi, I'm Dr. Keener, and I'd like to talk to you about something serious today. I'd like to talk to you about your twerk. That's right. I think lately you may have been neglecting your twerk, and I think it's important that we remedy that situation right away. You might even just think that twerk is just a, a, a twist or a turn or a, or a twisting force that causes rotation. And you might even think of it as the slide that I have here that, that has the equation that you might have learned back in high school or in physics. But there's a whole lot more to just this equation. In fact, twerk is responsible for happiness in every single day of your life. That's right. Your twerk is responsible for turning the wheels on your car that gets you to work or get you out to go shopping. It's responsible for tightening a loose bolt or possibly a very loose screw. Your twerk is so important that it gets you in and out of your house and every door that you open and close requires your twerk. And there's more. If you're getting ice or opening your refrigerator, you can't do it without your twerk. You see how important your twerk is? And it's not just us as adults who recognize that. Even kids know that twerk is important if they're going to be on the seesaw at the playground. That's right. I've come to realize that I can't even drink coffee or talk with my hands without using my twerk, which is why twerk is so important and yet it's so neglected. And that's why we're going to take an opportunity today to talk about your twerk. And who better to talk about your twerk than our own Dan Burns standing by in our Pasco laboratory to show you a whole bunch that you probably didn't realize about your twerk as we spend some time getting to know your twerk. Dan. Thanks, JP. May the twerk be with you. I'm really excited about the new Pasco meter stick torque set. Uh, comes with a meter stick, but not just any meter stick. This is an aluminum meter stick uh, machined very precisely. So it has very uniform properties. Also comes with a very low friction pivot and a clamp that can be attached to the pivot. So we can easily attach the meter stick for students to discover the properties of torque and balance on their own. So even a bubble level on the clamp so they can get very precise adjustments to their measurements. One thing to do is just have them see what happens if you have unequal weights on each side. And that is accomplished using these mass hangers that also slip onto the meter stick. And you get three of these mass hangers with the set. I'll put one on one side. Each one is 10 grams and that's labeled. So that helps students uh, from forget to keep them from forgetting to uh, include that. And I have masses here so that on this side, I have three times the mass of what's over here total. And by making slight adjustments, I can balance it. I think my, I can't see the uh, fulcrum on my side, but you can on yours. So they discover that this distance to the pivot is one third of the distance over here. And if they adjust it to other places, they'll find out that that stays constant. So they can gather data. For some students, this might be pretty simple. I always challenged mine by asking them to create a graph that would show this principle and I wouldn't tell them what to put on the axes, and that drives them crazy. So uh, try that one out. Now, a harder uh, application would be to change this so the meter stick is now off-center. And now the mass of the meter stick matters, but we need to know the mass of the meter stick, and that by itself is an interesting experiment. So let's do that. Let's put it so it's at way off here. And I'll put this here. And so now it's sort of looking like a crane. And if I find where this balance is, now the idea is I have a torque on this side 
from the weight of this half kilogram plus the 10 gram mass hanger and a lever arm that's slightly more than 10 centimeters. When I was doing this early, earlier, I got uh, this distance was 10.1 centimeters. Then there's nothing over here balancing it, at least not hanging from it. But we know that the mass of the meter stick can be thought of as to be all concentrated at the 50 centimeter mark. And so there's a one way to picture it is there's a mass hanging here equal to the mass of the meter stick. If it was a massless meter stick, that's what we'd have to do to balance it. So I can solve for the mass of the meter stick. And I have a slide here showing that. Uh, again, it's just the sum of the torques are zero. It's in static equilibrium. And I put in the mass of the uh, known mass plus the hanger and its lever arm. And that has to equal the mass of the meter stick times its lever arm, little g, cancels out divides out and I get 0.147 kilograms. I guess I do have one last part here. So I have the triple beam balance set to 147 grams. How about that? Your students will find discovering how torque works a lot easier with the precision of the Pasco meter stick torque set. What do you think about that, JP? I think, I personally think that's a great way of helping us understand and helping your students understand about torque. And so that's right, ladies and gentlemen, I want to welcome you. We are live, by the way, and I see you're joining us live. And thank you for the great comments coming in. Alex is out there live and he's saying he's getting torqued. And I fully understand because that's why we're here. Of course, for those of you who join us, you know, my name is JP. This week, the P actually stands for perpendicular. That's right. My name is J Perpendicular. And why does the P stand for perpendicular? Because torque is only caused by the force that's perpendicular to the lever. So I'm J Perpendicular. I'm here at Pasco Laboratories, and we're helping you understand about your torque. Now, it's interesting that Dan talked a lot about how we can explore torque and how we can take a look at how our students can explore torque, just taking a look at the, the meter stick and doing some nice experiments with it. But that made me think a little bit about some of my own applications right here in my office. Like, for example, on this slide, I was taking a look at my, uh, my desk lamp, for example. And my desk lamp has great applications of torque. Can we see that slide? Bring that slide up of, of my desk lamp, if you could, please. That's the one. When I take a look at my desk lamp, I'm taking a look at that perpendicular force that's responsible for helping me move my desk lamp into different positions. And that's very handy. But then I got to thinking, if that's the way that my desk lamp works, then how does this building crane work? And Dan kind of alluded to it, but there seems to be a whole lot more torque to it. And, and I need to understand that because again, torque is so important and you've got to know your torque. When I take a look at these building cranes, they are all over the skyline. And my biggest question is, every time I see them, how do they work? And how is it they don't fall down? And sometimes I know that they actually do. And so the question remains, why is your torque so important? I hope you're beginning to understand, but we're not done yet because we want to explore this at a much higher level, which means I'm gonna go back to the laboratory with the king of torque, Mr. J.J. Plank. J.J., tell me more about your torque. <laughs> Thanks, JP. Um, and thanks, Dan, for a, a great demonstration. And I wanted to show you an application that's a little bit more related to cranes. And so in Dan's application, his demonstration, we had forces being applied to this meter stick, right, downward, right? Well, in a crane, sometimes they've got these wires that help support the load that the crane's lifting, which is exactly what we have here. And so instead of all of the forces that are being applied, being down, now we've got a force that has a vertical uh, or an upward component as well. And so we can use this meter stick torque setup to help demonstrate a lot of things associated with this. <clears throat> and most importantly, we can use it to help students understand that connection between, uh, you know, the problems we do in our ho homework and the problems we do in our worksheets and actually applying those concepts to a system like this that actually shows you and can demonstrate the forces. And so 
up here up at the top, I've got a, uh, a uh, tension protractor. And what this tension protractor does is it can simultaneously tell us the tension in this string here, as well as the angle here. So this angle right here. Um, and so by adjusting the position or the amount of the mass or the load that the crane is lifting. So if I put on something a little heavier, hopefully this doesn't tip it over. You'll see that the tension in the string changes dramatically, right? And so that tension has a very important job that it has to help keep that load off the ground and keep things from tipping over, right? Falling down. Uh, but uh, I'm gonna show you some slides right now that will help us outline how we can make that connection between this as a problem and this as it exists right here in front of us as a demonstration, right? And so we've got this picture of our setup. It's got that vertical rod and then the horizontal meter stick here, and then that cable or the wire connecting it. All we need to do is identify the forces here, right? Let's say we, we don't know what the tension is here in this rope. So we wanna figure out what that is. We want to mathematically sort of calculate or experimentally determine this uh, tension in the thread there. We identify all the forces working here, right? And just like JP mentioned, we wanna pay special attention to the perpendicular component of force here. So if this meter stick is our lever arm, this vertical component of tension is going to be that perpendicular force. So it's the one that's causing torque, right? Or applying a torque. And so, Nothing's moving, we're in static equilibrium, so all the torques add up to zero. So if we add all, we sum the torques, we get them equal to zero, and we've got the, the weight of this mass here causes a torque, right? This is our axis of rotation right here. This, this weight causes a torque. The actual weight of this blue hanger here causes a torque as well. And then the weight of the meter stick itself causes a torque too. And so all of these we need to consider when we sum the torques, and that's what we have here in this equation. We have all three of those summed up. Oh, excuse me, forgot the most important part. This string also causes a torque, right? And I mentioned that a second ago, and this time the, the force is pointed in this direction rather than downward, so we have opposite signs that we have to consider as well. We sum them all up, we can simplify our equation and solve it for that force, that tension in this string here, and we get uh, a semi-reasonable expression to help us calculate, right, to determine mathematically what that tension is. And in fact, if I punch those values into my calculator, I've got the these masses, the mass of the, uh, the hanging mass here, plus the mass of the hanger, that mass of the hanger, and then the mass of this meter stick that Dan kindly determined in the last demonstration. Uh, if we plug all those in, plus this angle here, and it just so happens this angle on my tension protractor is 45 degrees, uh, this is horizontal, right? Uh, so if we plug all that in, we find out that the calculated value is about 6.2 newtons of tension here in this thread. And if you look here at our tension protractor, you should see about 6.2 newtons. And so with this beam horizontal, the weights pulling down in the places that they're pulling down, you know, with the lever arms that we're discussing here, as well as the tension being applied in this direction, we can calculate uh, a tension value of 6.2 newtons and show it right there. But this type of problem is a, is, is a little bit simplified because we're nice and horizontal here, right? We've got this handy angle, it's 45 degrees here that helps us a lot, right? But what happens if we change that angle? What, what happens if we make this problem more complicated? And it's very easy to do just that. These components are all hinged, right? And so I can simply just loosen this up and slide this up and down and you can show in real time how changing those angles affects the tension in this thread here, right? So if I lower this, if I lower this uh, uh, axis of rotation here, you can see how the tension changes. And if I increase it, if I even make the angle downward, you'll see the tension goes way up, right? And so we can show, we can demonstrate in real time how those forces, you know, are at work here. And in fact, just like we did with the horizontal boom or the meter stick, right? We can have a problem that involves the boom or the, the meter stick that's not horizontal. And what's really cool about this system, and obviously that's a little bit more complex, what's cool is the tension protractor, now you don't need to use the tension protractor to do this, right? You can have the same setup with a force sensor, let's say. You can hook your force sensor up here. Um, the one thing the force sensor doesn't tell you is the angle, but you know, students can use real simple tools to help determine what the angles are. Uh, but what's really neat is, and it, you probably 
can't see it in the video, so I'll just describe it. Uh, on these hangers, there's actually a scale, an angle, a 180 degree scale on there. And you can read this angle relative to the meter stick off of that right there. So it's actually really neat. And the, the metric scale on the meter stick on this uh, aluminum meter stick is on both sides, as well as the angle scales on these hangers. So students on either side of your lab table can do or participate in this lab at the same time. Um, and also the meter stick, the pivot here, this axis of rotation is connected to a rotary motion sensor. So if you wanna do any sort of dynamics applications with this, you can connect this. Now, Dan was using this uh, sort of pivot that comes with the system. If you have a rotary motion sensor, you can connect this to your rotary motion sensor and do rotational dynamics experiments, right? And one of the examples that Dan mentioned to me was, you have a setup, even with a horizontal boom like this, you pose the question to your students, if I cut this string, what's going to be the speed, the angular rotation, the angular speed of this meter stick as it reaches the, this sort of downward uh, direction or a, in it when it's vertical, right? And you can actually, not with this setup because it would hit the table, but if you have it hanging over the edge of your table, you could cut this while also measuring in real time the angular speed, right, of this meter stick as it rotates around. And so the last thing I just want to leave you guys with, um, I mentioned this boom application and I mentioned we can do it, we can treat it like a problem, just like we did that horizontal boom. Uh, and I'm just going to throw this slide up real quick just to show you guys that it's, it's, it's a bit more complicated, but it's not that much more complicated, right? So our forces are in a little bit different directions. So we have to be a little bit more careful with our angles, right? And what's perpendicular and what's not. And uh, yeah, so we can treat it the exact same way we did the boom experiment and we can solve for the tension in the thread for all these different angles if we wanted to. My expression that I have here is, is based on that angle, right? So this is our angle uh, phi here and our angle theta is down here. So yeah, so there's endless applications for this. Uh, it's a great tool for demonstrations. The tension protractor makes it awesome to sit in front of the classroom so students can see exactly what the angle and the tension in the thread is in real time, you know, as we move the boom around. Uh, so yeah, I mean, I could play with this thing for hours and I do, I love it. So, so those are some great stuff or that's some great stuff. And I'm going to now send it back to, uh, to JP uh, back in his office. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you. Thank you so much, JJ. It was great to see some great applications of torque, learning about torque. Hopefully everybody back home getting to know about your torque. I see you've had some people that wrote in. Uh, Scott Fields is enjoying his torque. He says it's the torque of the town. Uh, Leonardo feels that his torque is a very handy gadget. And we agree with all of you in hoping that you're learning about your torque and hoping that you're seeing what a great way it is that you can demonstrate torque to your students, whether it be hybrid or distance learning. Uh, it, whatever you're doing and it comes to torque, it's important that you recognize the importance and how easy it is to teach using this wonderful tool. And so ladies and gentlemen, we wanna thank you for joining us. And, and I wanna just say, please listen to your doctor, take care of your torque, and always, we wish you the best of luck, great teaching, and good day.